Hey, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. What I want to talk to you guys about today are lure retrievers. There are a lot of different options on the market. We want to talk about the different uh, styles of retrievers and where each one shines and why it's wise to have more than one style on the boat. We're going to cover four basic kinds today. You've got the, you know, like pocket knockers, then you've got hound dogs, but you've got two different styles of hound dog. Uh, with chains and without we use both and then of course the extendable pole uh, let's start with the extendable pole where this shines of course is shallow water because they're only going to reach out so far so if you're in more than about 15 feet of water you really can't use them at all uh, the reason why i keep one on board is specifically for a rigs now it'll get all sorts of things out they're great for crankbaits you can use them to get jigs out of rocks but where it really shines and where the other the other styles of knockers don't work is the A-Rig. When you use a traditional knocker, it's coming down the line, hits that A-Rig, but it, it's hitting the head, but never even gets close to the hooks, which are usually what's stuck. Even with a chain style, when that comes down, you're still just barely reaching out to those hooks. You may or may not be able to hook them and get out. When you go to the pole, you slide that down your line, you hit the front of that A-Rig, and then you start twisting. And as you twist it, it gets all the way down that rig. And then because it's a solid object, you can push backwards and really drive those hooks out of the cover and force it loose. Sometimes you come up with bent wires, but that's a fair trade for getting $20 worth of rig back out of the rocks. So that's really, for me, where that style shines. The pocket knocker is kind of at the other end of the spectrum. Where we use this is for finesse. Uh, a lot of the times where we're up throwing light line, you know, if you use this style of knocker, you'll nick that line up and you really don't need to be sending 10 or 12 or 16 ounces down to get a tube or a drop shot. You can carry a pocket knocker in your pocket Flip it open, clip it on the line, let it go. It'll sail down, knock that bait in reverse, and they come right out. So just really convenient way to do it. The two that I use most often, though, are going to be the hound dogs, with chain or without. I generally start without a chain, and the reason why is there's just less to get caught up. Sometimes when you send that hound dog down and you're really working to get a bait out, those chains can get wrapped up in the line. So I like to use one that, that doesn't have chains on it. The concept, of course, clip it on the line, and we'll show you in a minute, but clip it on the line, you send it down, and then you use a combination of the bait knocker and the rod to get it to back that bait out of the snag. Now when you buy these, they generally don't come attached to any kind of a reel. Uh, a few of them do, but most of the time they come as just the hound dog. So what we use just for convenience sake is buoys. They're simple, they're cheap, they store easily. And then, you know, in worst case scenario, you're short on a buoy, you can throw one of these over the side of the boat and you can use them as a marker buoy anyway. Now the hound dog with chains, where this is going to shine is baits like a crankbait uh, or say a swim bait that has stinger hooks on it. When you're using that style of a bait and you're sliding down that bait, if you don't knock it out right away, you know, you come down that line and sometimes it'll come right down, hit that bait and get it out. But if it doesn't, a traditional hound dog won't reach the hooks, won't get you out. But the chains, they'll get caught up in the hooks as you're shaking it, they get caught and then you just start pulling and you'll bend out whichever hook is stuck, but you get your bait back, and that's the important thing. So those are the four styles of retrievers. Now we're gonna actually get on the water and show you the specifics of how to use them, how to get those baits back out of the snags. All right, we brought you to one of the snaggiest spots on Clear Lake so we can show you how these different knockers work. I've got a tube stuck down in the rocks. We're gonna use this pocket knocker so the first thing that you need to do is get right over the top of the snag. That's critical. We get over here, 
get a hold of my line. And that pocket knocker has that snap on it. You just open up that snap, clip it on the line, close it up so it's on the line, and then I'm just going to let it go. But when I do, I want to still keep tension on the line with the rod. Right as the knocker gets to the bait, I'm going to slack the rod, slack the line, and that lets that knocker carry a bunch of speed on its way down but when it hits the bait, it'll hit it slack and there's room for it to knock it in reverse and push it backwards out of the rock. So here we go, I'm gonna let that go. Hold that rod up tight. Just hit. Go slack. It's that easy. Knocks it right out of the rocks. You get the knocker back, you get your bait back, and you're ready for your next cast. It's saving you money. In a tournament situation, it's saving you time. It's hard to beat. You just stick that back in your pocket. You're ready to get out there again. All right, now I've got a three quarter ounce jig stuck down in the boulders. Again, I'm gonna get up here over the top of it. I'm gonna take my hound dog, let out a bunch of extra slack. Put it over the line again. I'm going to let it go down. Now once it gets down to the bottom, <laughs> knocked it right out. I didn't even have to do anything. As soon as it touched it, that jig popped out of those rocks. Alright, finally got that jig stuck again. It's down deep in these boulders. So we're going to take that hound dog, clip it on the line, now again, what we want to do here, obviously the goal is just to send it down there and have it knock right out. But to show you the different options, hopefully this won't come out right away. So I'm going to keep that rod tight, let this hound dog get down there. All right, it's down with the bait. Now what we do, I've got the rod tight, we've got the hound dog laying on the jig. I'm going to pick that hound dog up four to five feet and then let it go on that tight line. As soon as I feel it start to hit, I'm going to drop that rod tip, give it slack, and that will allow the weight of that hound dog to push that jig backwards and out of that boulder. Sometimes it comes out on the first hit, sometimes it takes a few tries, but it should get your jig back out for you. Let's give this a try. Pull it up a few feet, let it go, and then I'm going to drop that rod. That's really all there is to it. It gets a hold of that jig and just knocks it in reverse, carries it right out of those rocks. That simple. These things save money. They're all going to work differently on different bodies of water, but hopefully we can save you some time, save you some money by showing you how these different baits run and how they sound, and then you can choose the baits that are best for you. This is the double buzz with the blade separated so that it's quiet. 